Hi, you guys, and welcome to EfficiencyAndOrganization.com. I wanted to make a video on how you can organize your finances so that way you don't have to spend a ton of money paying a bookkeeper or an accountant to do it for you. If you have a very small operation, a very small business like I do. So right off the bat, let me tell you, if you're making like your business is generating over like I would say $100,000 in revenues, you probably want to go through an accountant and a bookkeeper to make sure that they are um, like tracking everything unless you are well versed in accounting and bookkeeping. But otherwise, if you're making less than that, you probably want to do your own. It costs a lot of money to pay an accountant to do it for you. So you might as well try to do it on your own. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, you know that I'm not a very tech savvy person. I talk about that all the time. So I use my very basic knowledge of things like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and PowerPoint to be able to do what I do. And from previ previous videos, you probably also know that I have a full-time job. I'm a public school administrator, but I have two small businesses. One of them I've had for 20 years. I'm celebrating the 20 years this year. And the second one is my business that involves educational content creation, which is what I'm doing here on YouTube and on my website, efficiencyandorganization.com. So this is probably a good time for me to ask you to follow, to subscribe to both this channel and also on the website. I will have a link to the website in the description box. So organizing your finances, organizing your receipts, here is what I do. I've done this for 20 years and it's worked out perfectly for me. Every time I get a receipt that has anything to do with the business, I have a category for it. So then I keep them in these. These are my envelopes. So I have one envelope that's for efficiency and organization and I have another envelope for my other business that's 20 years old and I accumulate all the receipts in here. Yes, I print. I want actual physical copies of the receipts because if I get audited, sorry, audited, I don't want to have to go through and search and find. It'll all be here and it'll be super organized. You always want to think of the worst case scenario. What if you get audited, right? Okay, so before I jump on and show you on my computer how I keep track of the receipts, how I categorize them once a month using Microsoft Excel, I am gonna tell you that the receipts go in here, stay in my cabinets for five years. After five years, I get rid of them. So before I jump on the computer, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do a couple of things in a step-by-step -step fashion. Every time we have an expense for the business, we are going to print or we're going to get the receipt and we're going to go into our Microsoft Excel. We're going to enter it there. And then afterwards, we're going to put it in one of these folders. Even if it's something that you buy on Amazon, if it's something you buy online, no problem. Just print, put it in the envelope and then make sure you go in the computer and you actually put it in in the category. I'm going to show you how I use Microsoft Excel to keep track of my finances. So first things first, we're going to open an Excel file. So I will make my columns a little bit bigger. So what I do is I come right here in between the like the cells and I expand them. I can't do them here. See, it won't work. You have to do it like right here. OK, so then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give names for my revenues and for my expenses. So this sheet here will be my revenue. So I'm going to say revenues. That's all the money that I have coming in. Then I'm going to go way at the bottom. I'm not sure if you could see, but there is a plus sign. I'm going to open a new one and I'm going to call this expenses. So this is for very small businesses, OK, like people who um, are sole proprietors and do not want to pay someone to do their bookkeeping for them. So another feature I want to show you if you come right here to this corner and if you click on it like the whole thing lights up and then you can expand the size. So right here if I go up increase font size it'll make it a little bit bigger and I like that because I could see better. 
I'm going to do the same thing with the expenses. I'm going to come and put it at 14 so I could see. While I'm here, I can also change the font. So I just click on the down arrow and then I could go and expand it and like make it a different font. I am going to put some categories down. These are categories that are very similar to most for most businesses, small businesses. So the first one I'm going to say is printing and mailing. So if you go to the UPS store, if you get anything printed, when you buy paper, when you buy toner, you could put there. Another one I'm going to say is office supplies. So like when you buy highlighters and pens and post-its, you could put it there. My next category, I'll say advertising. Next, I'm going to say software expenses. So for example, if you have Microsoft Office Suite, you probably are paying for like the annual membership thing that would go under here. Um, a lot of organizations do have software expenses that renew year after year. When I edit my videos, for example, that's a, a company. That's something I pay for. So I'm going to have to put that here as one of my expenses. So now I'm ready to put some numbers. So let's say let's go to office supplies. Let's say um, I buy office supplies and it ends up costing me $12.49. Then I buy more, it ends up costing me $45.72. One more, $80.66. Here's the awesome part. I come somewhere down here, like I'll come to cell 20, and I'm going to make the computer, like the system itself, Excel to add them all up for me. Here's what I do. I put equal sign, sum, see how it automatically comes up, parenthesis, and I add all these together, close parenthesis, and bam. Did you see how it did that? It is so cool. So um, let's do another one. Let's do advertising. Let's say I paid $50 for Twitter advertising. Let's say I paid $100 for Facebook. Let's say I paid $102.78 for Pinterest or something. Okay, same thing. I'm going to come down here, and you could do this anywhere. I just I want to give myself space, so I'll do it here. Equal sign sum parenthesis and the computer says okay what do you want to add I want to add all these so I'm telling it to stop at cell 19 which is directly above it there you go not now all I have to do is report these numbers here at the end of the year or in January February when I'm doing taxes to the tax preparer and that way the person can put it in for me when they're doing my taxes as write-offs. It's super easy. But these numbers have to be exact, okay? They can't be, oh, I paid approximately this, I paid approximately that. It doesn't work that way. Um, a couple of things you want to keep track of is equipment. That's different. You don't just put equipment here. So maybe what we can do, because see, the tax person has to pay attention to depreciation. So how about if we create a whole different sheet and we call this equipment and furniture and we won't make it fancy. We'll just leave it like that. So let's say we buy a computer for $998.23. And here we are saying what it is. We're saying the amount and when we bought it. Let's say we buy it in March... Let's say we buy, buy it on March 9th of 2023. So this is enough information for the tax person to calculate depreciation. But see, it's best to create a separate section for that. Another category here would be telephone, uh, printer, maybe like sofas for the office. So here I'm going to go back to this page here just to show you a couple other tricks. If I were you, since these are the sums, maybe you could put a box around it. So if you come here to border, bottom border, you can put thick outside border. And I'll do the same here. Okay. And I want to show you one other super awesome trick. So let's say for software, we buy software or we renew for $1,047. And then we have one that we renew for $56.45. Instead of entering the formula here to add, what you can do is you could click on this. See that little tiny square right there? If you see the plus sign when you are hovering above it, 
you go like this and it automatically does it it's so cool okay so i'll do it for all of these and the reason it's saying zero is because obviously i don't have anything but let's say my internet is 79.99 which that's how much i pay for internet it's ridiculous so see every time i put 79.99 look what it does it just adds it for me it is pretty cool so yeah this is how i use microsoft excel every time i get a receipt i print it because i want to have a hard copy i put it in an envelope but before i put it in the envelope i come here and i save it here here is what i think you should do i think you should share this video with people you know who have their small businesses and need to get organized with their finances you guys, they're gonna pay hundreds of dollars to go to a bookkeeper that they don't necessarily need to do. It just takes discipline and it takes organization with your finances to be able to do this. Um, I have another suggestion for a person who's super untech savvy, like even worse than me, for a person who does not wanna use Excel or use Google Forms or anything like that, um, another, or Google Sheets for that matter, Another thing that they can do is they can have a bunch of these for each expense. For example, meals. They can go, like let's say they're going to eat somewhere with somebody, right? They can get the receipt, they can put it inside, but over here they can write the date and the amount. Date, amount, date, amount. At the end of the year, they could total it all up and give that number to the tax person to file the taxes. That's also another idea. That way you don't have to necessarily use a computer. Everything is done on paper. You guys, speaking of meals, you cannot put meals that are only for you. You can only include meals that have to do with taking a client out to eat, going somewhere with a vendor to eat, inviting someone for coffee to discuss collaborating in your business, possible advertising. So it has to be with one or more individuals that you guys are going to work together in some way, that it's tied to the business in some way. Another thing I need to tell you, a lot of people ask about travel. They go, well, I went to Vermont. Why can't I use that as a, as a write-off? Well, you can't unless you went to Vermont because of a business venture, because there was a conference, a convention, because you needed to go look at a property that you're somehow going to buy or sell in your line of work, or you're going to establish an office there. The other bonus tip that a lot of people ask about is clothing. They go, well, if I spend money at the dry cleaner, can I count it? If I go to the store and I buy myself tennis shoes, can I count it? Okay. If you're a painter, you're going to get paint on your shoes, right? So it makes sense for you to go and buy shoes that are specific to be used in your line of work as a painter. That makes perfect sense. You can write off those shoes even if they're $100 and $150. Uh, like, for example, real estate agents, they technically need to look nice and professional when they take their client, clients out to see homes and see properties. So for them, it would make sense to include dry cleaning bills. But for other people, same with lawyers, right? Lawyers, they have to wear their suits and stuff when they're out in the courtrooms. But would that make sense for somebody who has a home-based business? Would it make sense for someone who is a personal trainer? Probably not. So then you would not include those expenses. So again, it has to be tied to the business. Imagine you are sitting in front of an IRS agent and you have to justify it. I hope you found the video helpful and again, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. I release videos twice a week and they're always super helpful and they have to do with every aspect of life, whether you're a student, whether it's your personal life, it's your small business, uh, your finances, whatever it may be. I talk about being productive and efficient and organized in every aspect of life. Till next time, I'll catch you in the next video.